All right, well, it's time now for the press review then. While the violence in France has indeed dissipated over the last few nights, there is certainly still a sense of tension across the country, especially given the latest news that prosecutors have now opened a new investigation into the death, this time of a 27-year-old man who died uh, during the riots. Our press reviewer, Leo McGuinn, joins us now. Uh, Leo, what are the French papers saying about this? Yeah, Erin, as you say, a 27-year-old killed at the weekend, struck in the chest by a projectile that happened in Marseille. I'll show you the front page of La Marseillaise this morning. You can see here that a man is dead pending investigation. That investigation is underway. The incident took place in an area of the city where the riots had been taking place in downtown town Marseille, and he was on a scooter when he was struck in the chest by a projectile and suffered a cardiac arrest. These riots, of course, have been taking place after the death of teenager Nael last week. I want to show you this from Mediapart, which is a French investigative site. They have they, they look into the role of racism between in the police in France, but as in society as a whole. They say that you t you're in two camps. One camp is denying the problem and one admits that there is a problem. Someone who says that there isn't a problem with racism in the police in France is French Minister Bruno Le Maire. He says to say French police are racist is completely unacceptable. He said this talking to The Telegraph. He also said that safety of tourists in the country is completely guaranteed and people shouldn't be afraid of visiting France during this time. Now, what has been the what has the reaction been like outside of France, Leo? Yeah, I want to show you this opinion piece in The Guardian. You can see the headline here. Of course, Macron won't ta tackle police violence. He knows his power depends on it. They say that since 2018 and the yellow vest protests, the president seems to just accept the violence. Or is that through fear or sheer indifference? That's what the, the question they pose. They fit, the piece finishes with this extraordinary question. They ask whether Macron has simply assessed the scales of power and decided that he'd rather continue ruling with police violence instead of tackling, tackling it, even if it means the bonnieurs set ablaze. I'll finish on France with this piece from Scroll, which is an Indian website. They report that many Hindu nationalists are actually supporting the French far right, many even supporting the violence of police against rioters. And this is a simple fact because many of the protesters are indeed Muslim, including Nael, whose death sparked the riots, of course, and some have even called for the French police model to be replicated in India. All right, we'll change gears now, Leo, and head across the English Channel uh, to the UK. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak there is under fire for a broken promise. Tell us more. Yeah, as you can see on the front page of The Guardian here, the UK is ready to drop an 11.6 billion uh, pound pledge for climate fund. Uh, this is a pledge that they made back in 2019. If we look inside The Guardian, they expand on that. They say that Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has been accused of betraying those most vulnerable to climate change. It comes from a leaked briefing note where the UK said they just simply can't commit to this pledge that they had. But by 2026, it would be too huge of a challenge. They say there's a few reasons for that. The pandemic, but also pledging funds to Ukraine. This piece also reports that a lot of ministers are, are quite quietly furious with this decision and it comes just a week after Environment Minister Zach Goldsmith quit and he said that Prime Minister Rishi Sunak was apathetic towards the environment and that the UK's international reputation would be shredded by, by this. It comes just a week after a report published saying that the UK has missed several climate targets and they've lost their position as a world leader on climate matters. We'll stay on the theme of climate change because Monday was a record-breaking day and obviously not uh, for a good reason. That's right, Erin. Monday, the hottest day ever recorded, as we can see here in the Evening Standard. 17 degrees average worldwide. That's Celsius, of course, overtaking 16.92 back in 2016. Scientists have said that this is a combination, of course, of climate change, but also of the El Nino phenomenon. Monday's high is the warmest since satellite monitoring began back in 1979, but, but scientists believe that it's also the warmest since widespread instrumental records came in in the 19th century. It comes at a time where there's, there's heat waves in China, India and southern US and last month is also confirmed to be the hottest June on record and according to some scientists July will be the hottest month ever recorded. Bad news for someone with pasty Irish skin like me. And of course bad news for the planet uh, as well. Uh, Leo, all right, we'll finish with some new research into elephants and their diets. Yeah, well, it turns out we're a lot more similar to elephants than you'd think. They actually choose what they eat every night based on lots of different things like weather and also 
pregnant elephants get cravings. I don't know if you knew that. Just like humans in general, they vary between 137 different type of plants. Uh, elephants eat more grass when it rains and other plants when it's dry. So if you're having an elephant over for dinner, just check the weather to see what they want to eat. And it does feel like we haven't talked enough about this subject, so I'm really glad we finally addressed the elephant in the room. <laughs> Indeed, glad you ended. Got to end with a pun. Uh, Leo McGuinn, thank you very much.